So I just want to reintroduce the room. This is such a cool series that we're doing with the NAIA, and we've we had two different recordings. We did a recording on um, LEAD, Who Are You as a Leader? We did that at Park University. Um, and then we did a session on, it, on um, engagement. So how do we have meaningful conversations? And we did that at Avila. And today we are thrilled for our third session on acceptance here at beautiful Ottawa University. Woo! All right. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> it's early. It's early. Go Braves, right? Go Braves. Yes. Go Braves. All right. Um, the next sessions that we will be recording will be um, develop. So how do we develop strong teams? How do we break down silos? How do we bust past some of those barriers to strong teamwork? Then we have efficiency. So how do we get things done? How do we goal set? How do we work through boundaries? How do we get there? And then I'm sure no student athlete is past the resilience piece. We've, we've seen that through all the different sports seasons. You know, sometimes you get knocked down and how do you get resilient and get back up again? So, so those are gonna be our sessions um, going forward. So today I wanna kick it off. Uh, this is such an important conversation about diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. And I like to kick off these sessions by starting to talk about belonging. Because uh, I think when we talk about DEI, um, sometimes we leave out the belonging piece, and belonging so important. So, Stan, do you want to talk about belonging just a little bit? Yeah, I can. I uh, spent a long, a lot of years in this field of working in athletics, and I've watched us go from diversity to diversity and inclusion, diversity, equity, and inclusion, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. And what does that all mean? Uh, diversity just means difference. It's, we're all different, and that's what we bring. When we look at equity and inclusion and belonging, it's creating that environment where people can be successful, creating an environment where everybody brings the best that they have, and, and are we using the best that they have? Are we accepting of people? Do people feel like I, they want me to be here <laughs> as well? And so I think when you look at inclusion and belonging and all of those stuff, you're creating an environment where people can really thrive and be successful. A lot of our teams, in some cases, we create environments where people cannot be successful. And it affects our teamwork, it affects our productivity. So if we create an environment where people feel like they belong, guess what? They will thrive. They will do better. And all the science, all of the studies have shown that those teams, those organizations, those institutions that embrace diversity, embrace belonging, do better. And that's out there. There's studies. You can find many studies on that, that that is a part of what you need to be doing at this time. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. And I love this topic. And, um, you know, this... This series is called The Room because it's about the classroom, the locker room, and the boardroom. And everything we're gonna talk about today and everything we talk about in this series is important no matter where you are in your stage of, of life. So let's, let's ask the audience about belonging. So there's a Mentimeter on the screen. I'm gonna have you all scan it um, and tell me what words do you think about? When you think about the word belonging, what comes to mind for you? The beauty of a Mentimeter is the more we use the words, the bigger they get. So family is really big, acceptance, teamwork, togetherness, relaxing. <laughs> that is, <laughs> that's a cool word when we think about belonging because we can relax and we can be our true, authentic self, which is really great. So let's go to the, to the panel. So coach, we're gonna start with you. When you think about belonging, what do you think of? There's so many different things. I, you know, I think when it comes to belonging, the word that comes to my mind is compassion. I think in order to create an atmosphere where people feel like they belong, we have to first start with that foundation of compassion and understanding, um, especially when we push to, to the boundaries of being more diverse and having people around you that might not have grown up in the same way to help those people belong. If we don't have compassion, we can't get anything else done. Yeah, oh, that's great. Hannah, what about you? When you think about belonging, what do you think of? When I think about belonging, I think of family and I think of the ability to come together despite differences to reach a common goal. And I think just piggybacking on what Katie said that even though we come from different backgrounds that we can relate in some way and still find a common goal to reach together. 
All right, Stan. I know I asked you before, but, uh, but anything I, to add? I, I do want to add this to it. That a lot of people have heard this word belonging, and they think that we're only talking about the LGBTQ issues, and we're talking about transgender, and that's it. That's not true. I want people to understand that. That belonging includes everybody in the process, you know, including white males. <laughs> and people have to understand that. That this diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging includes everybody. Uh, this is not about affirmative action. It's not just about hiring. It's not just about we're going to bring somebody in, and that's what we've got to do. Uh, there is, you know, uh, affirmative action is a federal law. It says you have to act affirmatively if you receive federal funds. There is no federal law that says you have to be diverse. Don't think of the two words together. <laughs> They're not the same. And a lot of people think of them as being the same, that we're only talking about hiring and bringing people in. We're talking about a culture, an organization, all of the things that help people be successful. And that's what we want to do. So when we, I think about belonging, I'm thinking about everyone that's in this room right now brings so much talent, so much difference, that that's what we need to use and be able to harness. When we think about uh, belonging, we're talking about generational differences. You know, you're at a younger age, most of you, guess what, you bring so much to the table. <laughs> and we need to be able to, to, to use that just as much. It's not about how do you work with millennials, it's about how do we work together as, as individuals. That is perfect. Okay, I got a follow-up question for you, Stan. When we think about the importance of raising cultural awareness, how do we create an environment um, to have these difficult culture conversations? I think, first of all, we have to understand what culture is. <laughs> people think that culture, you know, you, you hear people say that the Ottawa culture, the Ottawa University culture, the Ottawa athletics culture. Uh, well, let's talk about just culture in general. I think of this. No matter where you go, you step into a culture. No matter where you go, you're going to step into a culture. And there's a general rule that I like to use, and that is he or she who's at the top of the pyramid has a right and a responsibility to set the culture. He or she who's at the top of the pyramid has a right and a responsibility to set the culture. What do I mean by that? That it takes leadership from the top. It starts with leadership from the top. If we want to have... If leadership says the culture is not going to be inclusive, guess what? It's not going to be inclusive. And all of us lead at some time, whether we're team captains, whether we're uh, over specific areas of, uh, uh, in our academic studies, we lead. And will we make it an inclusive environment where we in bring individuals in? So it starts with leadership. Then we have to assess our culture to see what our culture is all about. Talk to the people around. Find out about what, what they're feeling <laughs> about this culture. Uh, we all say, well, this is a great culture. Well, it may be a great culture in athletics. It may not be a great culture someplace else <laughs> on campus or in the community. What you survive in all of those areas as student athletes. So I think it's important to understand what is your culture. And once you do that, then you must educate yourself. Uh, must educate yourself about other cultures. When you walked into this room today, there was no culture in the room. There were artifacts, there were materials, there were um, tables, there were all of those things, but guess what? There was no culture. Until you came in the room, that's when culture came in the room. You bring your culture with you every day, and that's what culture is made up of. So if we understand what culture is, first of all, that's the start part. And once we do that, then we can begin to look at how do I understand the different cultures that are here and how do I embrace the cultures that are here and use that to help us be successful. Great. Coach, you've had an exciting career and I think you know everyone has followed your career um, journey. How would you recommend people be diversity brave and to learn about the different cultures? I think, you know, I, I, I preach a lot of, of times probably in annoyance to my team, but about unconscious bias and this reality that uh, regardless of how open-minded we think we are, regardless of how accepting of a diverse population that we think we are, we all fall short. And every single one of us is to blame for the inequity that goes on in this world. And the more that we reflect on 
our the part that we play in in building a, a place that is comfortable for people to share their diversity to to feel included to feel like they belong i think it really starts at the foundation i always you know i say don't assume she likes pink this reality that and and yeah it's referring to gender but it's also referring to all the stereotypes and barriers that we place on people because of their race because of their religion because of you know their sexual orientation uh, so at step one reflection is huge and the more that we accept the problems that we actually contribute to what it is that is going on in society i think that's the first task the more we we say well we're open-minded we we want to be different we want we want a culture that's diverse that, that they don't i think that's the problem it's all of us we all have bias i would encourage everyone to journal uh, I started journaling soon after I got into the NFL, when I was younger, and then when I got into the NFL. And I was one of those people that I hated journaling. I didn't see why people would use a journal. But I'm telling you, I, I became more aware of my own problems, my own issues that I was bringing the narratives that I was telling myself in situations that I was in, you know, oh, they don't, they, they must think that because I'm a woman. And you, when you write that down and then you reflect back on it, it's, you know, that was the narrative I told myself, but what was the facts? And could I have been wrong? And, and the less we, we spend, you know, worrying about that stuff, I think the more we can create a culture that is, you know, brave in, in diversity and inclusion. Yeah. I love that. And in the previous session, we talked about, you know, don't be nice, be kind. And I think that's a real important part to being, you know, culturally brave is having those very kind conversations. You know, when you said that, I felt this, or, you know, help me understand, you know, your background and where you mm -hmm. came from and why, why you see it that way. Yeah, I wouldn't, I would encourage everyone to walk a mile in, someone else's shoes. It's a small indication of how we need to really seek to understand the differences in those around us. Yeah, I love that. All right, Hannah. Um, I really think one of the coolest things about your college experience, and especially being a student athlete, is everyone from different backgrounds. So cultural inclusion addresses and supports the needs of people from different cultures and values. How do you build inclusion in the classroom in the locker room and on the field? I think it starts with two things. One, being willing and being able to have the uncomfortable conversations. And I feel like most of the time, um, especially as young people, we try to avoid it um, in a world where we feel like we have to be censored or we feel like we don't want to offend people. But sometimes having the uncomfortable conversation is what you need to have in order to grow and in order to know, you know you, whether it be your teammates or your classmates or the people that you're working with, if you aren't willing to have the uncomfortable conversations in the first place, you're not going to get anywhere in the field that you're in. Second, I would say being able to be open-minded when you do have those un uncomfortable conversations. I don't think that um, sometimes we often come in a conversation one-sided with our side of the story, as Katie would say, and sometimes we have to have the ability to empathize and understand that, you know, this other person grew up differently than how I grew up differently. They receive love differently. They receive criticism differently. So, you know, whether it's, you know, coach to athlete, athlete to athlete, professor to student, I think um, you have to be very cautious of, you know, the way you talk to people and how they receive that because if you all want to reach a common goal, sometimes the way you think that you need to talk to someone isn't always the best way to go about that. And I think to understand where someone comes from and why, you know, they are the way they are is the first step to achieving a common goal together and being able to fight through adversity as a team.